If the good Lord had intended us to walk, he wouldn't have invented roller skates. Now, would you all please put these on? We have to be very careful. There's dangerous stuff inside. This next comic, all I can say is he's a bad motherfucker. Give it up for Mikey Mays, everybody! Awesome, nice little intimate show. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> intimate in comedy usually means it's empty, but <laughs> this is dope. This is cool. It's like Fifty Shades of White in here. This is like... I'm, honestly, though, I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad you guys are here because I have quite like I can't prove it, but I'm pretty sure that Trump supporter is how white people call other white people the N word. <laughs> They do it the other way. They whisper, they lean in close. They go, man, had I known all these Trump supporters would be here, I wouldn't have came. <laughs> uh, the, I, I'm learning, man. Like, I'm walking outside, it's like a civil war outside. Like, if you're, if you're white and you own Trump anything, if you own a Trump keychain, you might as well be black because they're about to poison your water supply. <laughs> me I'm uh, I'm I'm not retarded but I'm close I, when, like I'm the weird uncle that lives in the basement that only comes up to like show you the toys he made like I, uh, it's, like when I was a kid I used to make fun of kids who uh, didn't know their dad it was and it, like here's the thing okay like, I thought y'all tightened up like oh this guy's a dick no look all right Contrary to popular belief, I grew up with parents, all right? So it was weird that I knew kids that didn't have a dad. Like, how do you not have a dad? You need a mom and a dad to make you. You don't have yours? Ugh, I'm gonna go hug mine right now. Get your life together, you know? And they would always have the same excuse. They would always have the same excuse. One day, their father went out to get cigarettes and never came back. To this day, I still don't smoke because of that. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to think if you smoked too many cigarettes, you would disappear. <laughs> uh, anyway, when uh, when I got a little older, I found out I was adopted. <laughs> which means my real parents were smokers. <laughs> One night, my dad went out to get cigarettes. My mom was like, hold on, I'm coming with you. <laughs> Uh, if you guys couldn't tell by now, I say shit. I don't. I have their words, you know? Like, I say words, and I realize that gets me into a lot of trouble. Like, okay, the other day, right, I met a dude with one arm. And I'm the type of person, I didn't think it was rude, so I asked him what happened, you know? Because it's like, I have two, you have one, what's going on, you know? <laughs> like, I'm not trying to be a dick, I'm just trying to get to know your story. Were you in Iraq? Did you get attacked by a shark? Did you get caught stealing bread in Agrabah? Like, you know, and people always tell me all the time, they're like, it's rude, what if he doesn't want to talk about it? Fair point, but what if he did want to talk about it? And in this case, he did want to talk about it. He looked at me like he couldn't wait to talk about it. I was like, what happened to your arm? He's like, I fought a bear. Fuck yeah, dog. <laughs> fight depression, you're out here slapboxing grizzlies, good for you. <laughs> uh, I, I have a friend, I have a friend, right, and he's missing both of his arms. He looks like a little baby T-Rex. <laughs> he didn't fight a bear or anything like that. Uh, I can feel you guys tighten up, don't, like, he's my homie, right? I, he makes fun of me for my missing parents, I make fun of him for his missing arms, it's a whole thing. <laughs> And I haven't seen him in a while, right? And the other day he sent me a text. He goes, hey, Mikey, how have you been? I haven't seen you all. How are you? And I sent him a text back like, hey, man, I'm good. How are you uh, texting this? <laughs> I, I know I shouldn't say the things I say, but I don't care, man. These are words, man. This is supposed to bring joy, you know? Like, and like, it's one of the things, like, I'm a comedian, so I'm a comedian everywhere. Like, this is just me. I'm not pretending to be this, man. So, like, I'll be out somewhere. Like, I was at a coffee shop the other day with my homie, right? And I went to take a drink of my tea, and I just missed my mouth completely. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you guys? Like, you just forget how to be an adult? Like, 
He was like, oh, look, it's Christmas cancel, everybody. That's, that's what happened to me. I went to take a drink of my tea, and I spilt it all over my shirt. And I was like, bro, I think I'm retarded. <laughs> and before he could say anything, this woman out of nowhere just goes, hey, it's rude to say the R word. <laughs> said the R word? Well, come on now, that's just retarded. And, <laughs> and she goes, no, how would you like it if somebody called you the R word? I was like, well, I don't know if you know how this conversation started, but <laughs> you're doing a bad job of proving your point. And she goes, I see assholes like you every day. You think you can dress how you want, say what you want, live how you want? I said, yeah. She, she, said, she said, well, what about your friend? How'd your friend like it if somebody called him the R word? My friend looked her dead in the face and said, fuck you, I'm not retarded. <laughs> I'll show you who you really are. I, I, uh, I, man, I'm happy to be here, man. I love this, man. I love doing comedy, man, because like I came a long way to do it, man. Like I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Whoa. Yeah, I know. But I, yeah, as far as look, like that's the reaction I get is a whoa or where, you know? <laughs> Cause nobody knows. Like the only people who know where I'm from, they it's because they've either been there or it's from the show called Breaking Bad. And, and if you don't know about Breaking Bad, it's basically a show about a dude who kind of looks like you, except he had way worse choice in sweaters and. <laughs> He's doing so bad at being white that he's just like, fuck it, I'm gonna sell meth. So, so everybody thinks that where I'm from, people just smoke meth, which isn't true, uh, completely. Like, we're also alcoholics. And, like, and it's the thing, man, because I wanted to make a better life, so I wanted to move from a place that's just, because my city is just filled with alcohol and violence. Like, you know the saying, uh, if a tree falls in a forest and nobody's around to hear it, doesn't make a noise? Yeah. Okay, well, in New Mexico, there's also a saying, it's, if you go to a party and nobody gets shot, were you really at a party? <laughs> That's all it is, it was just alcohol and violence. So I decided I was gonna leave and move to a better place. New York City. <laughs> the home of alcohol and violence. <laughs> Like, New York City is one of those places, because I live in Brooklyn now, and Brooklyn is still going through gentrification, which I'm still learning about. And apparently what gentrification is, is when somebody puts a Whole Foods, uh, <laughs> where a crime scene used to be. <laughs> it's the crazy thing, because my neighborhood is just filled with hipsters and gangsters. Just everywhere you go, it's just hipsters, gangsters, hipsters, gangsters, Jews, hipsters, like... <laughs> I'll see a white girl with a tiara and a cape on just rollerblading down the street. Just the <laughs> and then I turn the corner, it's an episode of Law and Order. <laughs> and not even the full episode, just the beginning when they first find the body. Like, what do we have here, Ramirez? <laughs> I was skateboarding through my neighborhood the other day, because gentrification also comes in black. And <laughs> And I see this thug walking across the street, right? And he's like a thug, thug, like hardcore thug. Like he's got the baggy jeans with the baggy shirt, with the shoes to match the shirt, with the hat with a team he didn't root for. <laughs> he looked like 1992 was a great year for him. And, and he was one of those dudes you could tell by the way he was walking that he didn't want to give up on the way Brooklyn used to be. Which was confusing because he was walking out of the Starbucks. But, but th like, he was walking, but when he was walking, he was taking his time. And when thugs walk, like, they don't hurry for anybody. So he's just stroking. And I'm skating because I have places to go. Right? So I'm skating and he's walking. I'm skating he's walking. I'm skating he's walking. All of a sudden, I see him see me. And he gives me that look like, I wish this nigga would hit me right now. And I gave him the look like, bro, this wish is about to be granted. <laughs> So I'm skating, he's walking, I'm skating, he's walking, I'm skating, he's walking right before I get to him. He stops short, I zoom past, he goes, yo, you know where you at? And I was like, nope, and I kept skating. <laughs> if you guys didn't learn anything from me tonight, man, just learn, do what you want, and say what you want, be who you want, man, because, like, life is too short. Like, I was never supposed to be a comedian. My mom always thought I was going to be a pilot. <laughs> so I remember when I was a kid, she would tell people I was going to be a pilot, whether it was church, school, the third place. She'd even start the conversation. She'd be like, hey, you got kids? 
Well, fuck you, kid. My kid's gonna be a pilot. <laughs> she bought me pajamas with planes on them, posters with planes on them, books about planes. We never talked about flight school, but that's okay. <laughs> so one day I had to sit my mom down. I had to tell her, I said, Mama, look, I love you. I really do, but I'm not gonna be that pilot you always wanted me to be. In fact, I'm gonna move to New York City. I'm gonna become a comedian. I'm gonna make an apartment full of white people to laugh. <laughs> said, you know what, son? It's your life. You're a grown man now. I raised you right. I love and support you no matter what it is you choose to do. <laughs> so now my mother tells people, my son lives in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a pilot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mikey Mays. You guys look awesome. It wasn't supposed to be this hard. It was never supposed to be this hard. It wasn't supposed to be this hard. It was never supposed to be this hard. It wasn't supposed to be this hard. It was never supposed to be this hard. It wasn't supposed to be this hard. It was never supposed to be this hard. It wasn't supposed to be this hard. It was never supposed to be this hard. It wasn't supposed to be this hard. It was never supposed to be this hard. It wasn't supposed to be this hard. It was never supposed to be this hard. It wasn't supposed to be this hard. It was never supposed to be this hard. It wasn't supposed to be this hard. It was never supposed to be this hard. Could you imagine if you live forever? Like, it sounds cool on paper, but... Can you imagine all the pain you'd see? I'm only 28 and I see pain every day. Every single day I see someone in pain. And I don't know how to make like anything better. All I know how to do is make them smile, man. For me, that's worth it.